Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. It's that time of week again where I sit down and relax with a cup of coffee, a few bits and bobs around me um, to talk a little bit more about lockdown and what's going on and what I get up to. And I want to wa I want to thank everyone for watching these videos, by the way. And for getting in touch with me and telling me about things that you... Uh, Gary wrote to me last week to tell me uh, about his ambition to run a marathon. And he said, you're absolutely right. It all begins in your head. And he never thought he would run and complete this marathon, but he did. And um, so thanks. Thanks to everyone for getting in touch and for letting me know the little hobbies that you've taken up during the lockdown. Now, I have taken up quite a few. Um, the stuff I should have done, I wanted to do anyway. And now that we can't, I mean, I spend in normal times, I spend a lot of my time traveling around the country. Of course, we can't do that now. So I've uh, taken up things that I've sort of always been interested in, always wanted to do. And now I've found myself with a bit more time to do it. And I'm making myself have that little bit more time to do it as well, to relax. It's really, really important that we relax. And particularly with the time that's in it, and not just lockdown, but what else is going on? We've, we're entered the, we've absolutely entered the age of censorship. And we all know what's been happening with, the, with Donald Trump and having his uh, being blocked from all the mainstream social media, even though Hamas and all other jihadi terror groups, among others, are still on there and regularly actually do incite violence. And another brilliant uh, tweet from Titania, Titania McGraw, one of my all-time favourite accounts on Twitter, um, pointed out that now that the big players, the Googles and the Apples and, the, and, and Amazon and all the rest of them, are getting together to, or have gotten together, to take Parler offline and sadly have been successful in it. The other alternative was Gab. Now, I do have a Gab account, and I, I, I never really took to Gab, to be honest. I, I found Parallel much easier, but I'm going to go back on. I'm going to give it another try. Um, and apparently they have had a lot of traffic since this uh, thing, this uh, kicking Donald Trump off, um, off social media happened. People have been going to Gab. But back to Titania's tweet, um, she said... <laughs> You know, they keep telling us, well, if you don't like the rules of Twitter, go make your own platform. So Parler did that, and now they've gotten together to take Parler offline. Unbelievable. So we really are living in, in an age of censorship. So I would encourage people, and I'm going to go back on Gab myself. I'm going to put a little bit more effort into Rumble as well. So I'm going to put videos on to our Rumble account and onto our party YouTube account, the ones I can risk on party YouTube account. Um, because I don't want to risk that account. But we do want to get people over to Rumble, and we've got a little something planned, uh, which I can't tell you about at the moment, but you will find out fairly soon, to try and get some people over onto to Rumble. So I'll, I'll give you a bit more information about that as time goes on. Right, so what have I been doing uh, hobby-wise to escape the madness? Oh, right, you, you remember last week I told you about I had taken up building cities from Lego. Always allow your inner child to come out. Your inner child is very wise <clears throat> and will help you relax. So I'd built so far, I'd built London, San Francisco and New York. And I had Paris. I got Paris over Christmas. These things aren't cheap, so I won't be able to afford a great deal of them. But they are completely addictive. They're so very relaxing. So I'll show you in a sitting, a single sitting last night. Here's where we got to. Isn't that fabulous? Now, obviously, the Eiffel Tower is incomplete. Um, and actually a little bit difficult. It's not easy to put together the Eiffel Tower. I'm finding that one a bit of a struggle. But just, it's completely addictive. I could sit for hours and hours and hours doing this. I fully, highly recommend it. Like I say, it isn't cheap. Um, but if you do have the means, I highly recommend it. Um, and it's, yeah, very, very therapeutic. Something that's a little bit cheaper that I'm now going to, that I've now decided to take 
on this little this task well not a little task quite a big task actually and I've I, I, I like art oh by the way the drawing that I, I started you know sometimes you have to admit defeat and move on to something else this isn't working you'll find you'll find your things you'll find and you like Lego I, I'm absolutely loving it Drawing not, it didn't quite work out so well. I have to accept the reality of the fact that I am not a good drawer. Um, I'm probably <laughs> unlikely ever to be. But there are other ways. And I've always, I've, I like art, but I know nothing about it. And I particularly like Vincent van Gogh. And uh, probably one of the reasons for that is because when I lived in Amsterdam, there were two places I spent a lot of time, sort of havens for me. One of them was Anne Frank House, where I went to a lot. The other was the Van Gogh Museum, beautiful, enormous museum in Amsterdam. So what I found was a canvas of Starry Nights by Van Gogh, which is here. And you can see that it's got little letters and numbers across it. So what you do with it is stick this, it's when you pull that film off, it's sticky. And these tiny little beads you stick on by number and by name. Make your own Van Gogh. That's basically what it is. So that's going to take me a bit of time and effort, but I think uh, will be very relaxing and focus the mind. I was, um, when I was building Paris last night, was thinking about Paris and with this Van Gogh, thinking about Amsterdam and thinking about our beautiful ancient continent and how I sadly believe that it is in many ways being lost. Uh, it isn't lost, but we are at risk of losing it if we don't fight for it. And I do mean fight for it. We've had a lot of virtue signalling this week um, about fighting, fighting for something. And when you look, I, I, once again, I don't feel I should have to qualify this every single time, but I will. Once again, very few people actually want what happened in, on Capitol Hill these notorious scenes now on Capitol Hill. But the, pro the po point is, nobody's listening. There are millions of Americans who genuinely believe, and with good reason, that they are, have been deprived of their rightful president and have had an Antifa, Black Lives Matter type, in other words, a complete and utter hypocrite who threatens everything that the United States is supposed to stand for. That they have instead had this guy imposed upon them instead of their rightful president. And no one's listening. The media, because it's not a media, it's, a, it's an arm of Antifa, the, the publication of the anti-democratic uh, anti movement, so represented now by Joe Biden. If you take away, and nobody's listening, the courts aren't listening, the media's not listening, so if you take away people's voices, it is our nature, it is our history. We can virtue signal all we like, but the history of man is war. And people will resort to violence if they are deprived of every other means. Now, I, um, I hate violence, I even hate raised voices, I don't like conflict but nor will I run away from it and to be clear about one thing I'm a democrat I still believe our way out of this age of censorship is through democracy and I fully intend to devote my life to democracy in fact I haven't devoted my life both to Great Britain and to a defending democracy in Great Britain however to be clear I am willing to fight to the death rather than become a slave uh, and that is the reality of it. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. But we are at risk of losing Europe. And as I was, as I was building this last night, I was thinking about some of the memories that I've got 
uh, and we're, us we're using it to be clear through immigration. Um, mass, 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 mass immigration. So just let me take you through a couple of little things. I've been to Paris a few times, and it's, building this brought back some, some memories. Just, be clear, just let me know um, what everything is. Um, this is the uh, Arc de Triomphe. This is the Champs Elysees. This is the Grand Palace. This, of course, will be the Eiffel Tower. And this is the Louvre. And you've got to love the little uh, triangle there outside the Louvre. This is the tallest sky skyscraper in Paris. Um, and it's Mon it, it escapes it escapes me. Mont, Mont Paris or something. It escapes me the name of it now. Um, but it made me a little bit... It made me... It reminded me of the, the sheer history and the romance of the history of our amazing continent. Um, I remember the first time, the first time I went to Paris was a present for my 20th birthday, or my 19th birthday, I think it was my 19th, by the family that I was au pair, I was an au pair in Germany. And the family that I worked for, for my birthday, bought me a trip to Paris, which was absolutely lovely. My first time there. And a few days, it was a few days after Princess Diana died in Paris. And the we, we, we did a sort of a tour bus. And the tour bus took us to the tunnel where Diana had died only a matter of days earlier. Which was open and, and open to traffic, which I found really bizarre. But there was still a lot of press uh, like, uh, floating around and and what have you. And I went to the Louvre that day. And this is, again, takes me back to the art. I love art. I just know absolutely nothing about it. I think it's a great journal or journal maker um, of history and, and historic events and, and historic change. And I went to the Louvre that day and I saw the Mona Lisa and that absolutely blew my mind. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's much, much smaller than you think. And a bit like the Crown Jewels, uh, one of the most fascinating things about it is the security around it. So I was thinking that I was thinking about Europe and I'm thinking about how we have to how we have to fight for it and we have to fight against the mass immigration, which is changing the face of it completely. And we have to fight, in order to do that, we have to fight against the censorship, which censors those of us who wish to save and preserve our ancient continent um, and stop it turning into something completely unrecognisable and something that isn't ours. We are going to have to fight for that and we need to get up, go out and take back our democracy, which... For the last couple of years, hasn't been easy to do because we haven't had, we didn't have any elections last year, and it's looking like we're not going to have them this year either. So it's getting much, much harder. Um, what else have I got? Oh, I just a, a little Christmas present. I also wanted to show you. Do you remember this? I remember this back in, this is one of the nicest Christmas presents I've had. I got this as a Christmas present this year. It's got 900 and something games on it from the 80s and 90s and including the original Mario Brothers, the only video game I've ever, I'm not a gamer by any means, the only video game I've ever played from start to finish is the original Mario Brothers and now I have it again. And I did have a little play of it um, and I wasn't, I, I thought, I thought actually I'd remember more than I did. But at the same time, it is amazing what your, what your brain will um, retain. So I'm looking forward to doing that. We used to do, used to do uh, back, in, back in the 80s, um, go to arcades and play Space Invaders and Pac-Man. Pac-Man is on there. I can't, for some reason, can't, can't find Space Invaders on it. Unless I'm missing it. There are over 900 of them. But I can't find Space Invaders on it. But Pac-Man is on there. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to playing that. That really does take me back to the 80s. Uh, but of course, Mario. Mario. And we got that. My, myself and my sister got this as a joint present back in the 90s, early 90s, or probably late 80s, actually. Um... And as I say, it was the only game I'd ever played from start to finish. And I've got it now again, and I can't wait to get back into it. 
One other thing that I've decided to do and to take up, or to have a look into at least, is this. The art of Japanese living. I had two major bucket list countries left. Uh, one of those was India and the other is Japan. And I went to India in, uh, I can't remember what year it was, was it 2019? We, was it 2019? I think, what was it, 2018? Anyway, I went to India to work on a um, volunteer at an animal shelter. Oh, and by the way, the greyhounds. Oh, I love the greyhounds. I put up a video on Parlour, which is now gone, of course. I went last week, I went in, they have a, a puppy section and these are months old only, these dogs, months old. And it was heaven. You walk in and they just swarm at you. Absolute heaven. Jumping all over you, completely covered in mud, which I love. Um, so that's going, it's going amazingly. I'm really, these dogs, these greyhounds are absolutely wonderful dogs. And I already want to bring them home with me. There's one particular dog, Mary Ann. And she likes to, when you go in and give her a bit of a, a cuddle, she likes to get down and go on her back for belly rubs. And I'm already completely in love with this dog. And I've already told them that I want her. I want her to come home with me. I don't know what Jenny and Steffi will think of that, but um, they're probably not great. Probably not much, especially Jenny. Jenny doesn't like dogs that are bigger than her. Now, Jenny has not, didn't have the best start in life. She came from um, a puppy farm. She came from a puppy farm, actually, that was so bad, it was closed down by the police. So she didn't have much socialising. When, when she came to us, she had four different, in, four different bacterial infections in her lungs. And so she was on several different sets of antibiotics in, from very, very early in her life. She couldn't get her uh, inoculations while she was on these antibiotics, and she was on them for some weeks. And because she couldn't get her inoculations, she couldn't go out until she... she we, we couldn't bring her out for a walk or out to play um, until much later than she needed to because she was really, really ill. So... She didn't really get the socialising that she needed. The puppy farms take them away from the mothers really, really young. So she didn't get the teaching of, from her mother. She didn't get the socialising. So she's not a fan of dogs. She Obviously, she knows our other dog, Steffi. She's, she lives with her. She can, she's their best mates, actually. But when we go out for walks, Jenny is terrified of dogs that are bigger than her, which is heartbreaking. So I don't know if I'd ever be able to get a greyhound into this house. But I would dearly love to. But anyway, back to the back to this. I've decided that I'm going to have a. There's some really interesting things in here. Japanese philosophy is really, really interesting, um, and they've got. I mean, there's there's, there's food in here. There is uh, they've uh, bathing. Um, proverbs. Furniture, floral arrangements, of course, the bonsai. I'm going to have to get myself a bonsai. So this is something that a little challenge that I'm setting myself for this year is to learn a bit about, more about Japanese culture and practice it and see, because I'm absolutely, absolutely fascinated by Japan. And even, even origami. I mean, it's just there's so, many, so much wonderful stuff in here that I'm really fascinated by and I really want to, to get into. So I keep you, I'll let you know how I get on. I've got to read, start on this, this week. The first one, Iki, Ikigai. Um, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly. It is the finding what gives you a meaningful life. And this is the first chapter and this is the sort of stuff I love, as you know. So Japan is on my, the last major... Uh, not the last one. I've got well. Well, now that I've done India, India and Japan are, are two places I really want to see. But of course, I'm not able to go five minutes down the road at the moment, much less to Japan. So instead of saving my pennies to go to 
see Japan for myself. I'll instead spend the year trying to learn and practicing Japanese culture, which I'm really looking forward to. Okay. Books. What have I been reading this week? I've been reading a book this week called, uh, which is recommended to me by one of our supporters in the United States. And I'm going to do a book review of, on this this Friday because I really do think that this is where we're going. And it's The Case Against Socialism by Rand Paul. And it's probably the best book I've ever read on this topic. On this topic. Just give you an idea of some of the um, chapters. Socialism destroyed Venezuela. Socialism rewards corruption, interfering with free markets. Capitalism is more moral. Uh, income inequality does not ruin the economy or corrupt government. Some controversial stuff. It was really, really, really interesting. And it's some of the best that I've seen on this topic. It also talks a lot about where America is going in terms of open advocacy for socialism. It talks about Bernie Sanders and, and, and others. Um, and their, like I said, their open advocacy of socialism. They, they mention a lot in the United States, the, the socialists in the United States talk a lot about Scandinavia and how Scandinavia is an example of a high standard of living, well off society that is, according to them, a socialist society. What's interesting and what they don't mention is that Scandinavian countries themselves deny in any way that they are socialist countries. And the reason they deny being socialist countries is because they're not socialist countries. Yes, they are high tax countries. And yes, their welfare system is very, very generous. But they make their money on the capitalist markets, just like everyone else. Norway, Sweden, Denmark are very successful countries, yes. Well, let's see in a few years what the mass immigration does to them. But they are not socialist countries and they fully deny themselves being socialist countries. But yet they're used in America by socialists there as an example of successful socialist countries. They are all free market economies, all Scandinavian countries. Part three of this book is entitled A Boot Stamping on the Human Face. And this was really controversial. It goes into Nazism. And that old argument of whether or not the Nazis were socialists, he argues that yes, they were, goes on to talk about how socialism doesn't create equality and it expects things from humans which are simply not human. Uh, it's a brilliant book. It's a brilliant book. So I'm going to do a full book review of that on, on Friday. Tomorrow, I won't be doing, we won't have our normal half past seven stream tomorrow night because instead I'm going to be on with David Vance tomorrow night. But I'm also going to do a video tomorrow. And Simon, thanks Simon, sent me, and this is very relevant to the age of censorship that we're living in, legislation introduced to Parliament to protect us from so-called online harms and given what's going on at the moment the last thing i think we need is a is the tory government calling for and legislating for even more censorship on the internet so i'm still reading through this i'm reading through the legislation itself um i will get that i will get a review of that up by by tomorrow night I am going to go back on Gab. There is, um, I'm going to put this out on Twitter in a few minutes, actually, just to, to try and drum up a bit of support for this. There's a book coming out in the United States 
called Unmasked. And it's by Andy No. Now, Andy No is, I've never met him in person, but I've talked to him many, many times. He's a really, really great guy. He has been documenting, bravely facing on, he's, he's faced violence for doing it, bravely facing up to um, Antifa, across in, 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 particularly in Portland and Oregon, for uh, quite some time now and documenting it all on Twitter. And, and elsewhere. And he has written this book, Unmasked, how Antifa, it's the radical, I, I can't remember the subtitle, Antifa's radical plan to destroy democracy. Now, in Portland, at the moment, there is a group of Antifa protesters outside a bookshop, a bookshop which was going to stock this book. And they have been protesting outside this bookshop for days wanting this book banned or threatening this bookshop not to stock this book. There's a video on Andy's Twitter account of a woman masked up, standing outside, demanding this book be withdrawn while thinking, genuinely thinking, she is protesting against and opposing fascism. You, you you cannot, you genuinely, you can't make this up. They haven't got a clue what they are talking about. Not a clue. Absolutely not a clue. They throw around these big words like racism and fascism without an iota of what they are talking about. They whip up violence all the time. They engage in violence all the time and with the both implicit and explicit support of the very same Democrats who are currently trying to get Donald Trump impeached for inciting violence, something he did not do. <sighs> this, is, this is the age we live in. Everything upside down and inside out. However, as you very well know by now, I strongly believe that we, the Democrats, the people who believe in democracy, must and will win this. If we do not, if we do not fight for our democracy, it is inevitable, inevitable, that the result will be violence. Because, how do I know that? Because that's always been the result throughout history. This isn't the first time that we've had to, that democracy has been taken away from us. It's not the first time that our freedoms have been taken away from us. So throughout our past, people have both fought violently and non-violently to get their democracy back, and they have succeeded. But if we lose democracy, it is inevitable that violence will result. And it will be the fault of those who take our democracy away. The Democrats currently trying to impeach Donald Trump for something he hasn't done have and do condone and support the violence of Antifa. Now, support Andy. Andy, no, he's a really good guy. Support him. His, his last name is spelled N-G-O. Many of you will probably know him. They desperately want this book banned and that makes me want to read it evermore and I will be ordering it as soon as I can. Okay, so where are we? Okay, so let's get on with our three words of wisdom. I'm going to go through this book until we finish. And when I finish this book, I'm going to take another book. Another book with similar things. So this is the book I've been reading for the past uh, some time, words of wisdom, inspirational quotes and thoughts on optimism. And we're up to number 15. I think there are a hundred and something of them. So we've a way to go. Okay, so number 15. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. Beverly Sills. Now, sadly, I don't know who Beverly Sills is. But 
she's right about this. Whoever she is, she's right about this. This is again similar to what I was what I talk about every week really on this on this video. Um is the instant, the culture of instant that we live in now. And people wrongly believing that if you can't succeed instantly, you can't succeed. I actually believe that for to build something of substance, even in the age of instant celebrity, to build something that will last and of substance can't be done instantly. Easy come, easy go is a very um, apt phrase. And I also believe that the, in the age of social media, given this extraordinary level of control and power that the uh, Silicon Valley billionaires hold over us, if you build yourself on social media, you have given your enemy the power to destroy you. So I stand by it. I'll say it again and again and again and again because it's true if you want to succeed you're going to have to work hard which is good for you and where you make friends and meet people and that's what life is all about so i'll give you the i'll read quickly the explanation on this one of today's biggest misunderstandings <coughs> excuse me is that people want a quick fix Three steps to happiness, three keys to financial freedom. The problem is there is no quick fix and thinking that there is leads to more unhappiness. No wonder we have higher depression and suicide rates than ever before. Happiness is possible for you. Financial independence is possible for you, but you have to be ready to do the work. Be patient and fail over and over again. I talked a little bit about that last week as well. Now, who did I see? Um, I think it was right, one of these Dragon's Den people who had was speaking about bankruptcy. He'd previously been bankrupt. And you'll, you'll hear that a lot. Uh, it's sort of like uh, people who go on to be millionaires and billionaires having lost, ha having failed businesses behind them, or Gordon Ramsay having failed restaurants behind him. In many respects, people, a lot of people would argue that failure is actually, in order to learn how not, in order to learn how to succeed, you have to at some, you have to at least you don't have to, I suppose, but what you can do is take failings and learn from them and, and not not make that mistake again. <laughs> you will have to take rejection over and over again, but in the end, you will succeed. If you waste your time looking for the shortcut, you will be doomed. Yes, you might win the lottery, but did you know that statistically you have a better chance of being struck by lightning? I'm just saying. Stop searching for the shortcut and start working on your goals now. Your future self will thank you. And as I say, as I said, you know, the idea that hard work and, and, and a long journey is something to be feared, I completely disagree. Hard work is good for you, genuinely, genuinely good for you. It's good for you mentally, it's good for you physically. And you meet people and you build alliances and you make friends and you learn lessons. And it, it's all around enriching. Okay. The sweetest pleasure arises from difficulties overcome. Publius Cyrus. Again, I don't know who that is. We all want a life free of problems and difficulties where everything goes our way and we get everything we want. Unfortunately, few of us have a life like that, except on, a life like that, except on social media. That's an interesting point. He doesn't go actually go into more detail on that. But stop a minute and think back. Wasn't it the difficult times that shaped you most? Didn't you learn life's most important lessons from the difficulties you had to overcome? Didn't your confidence grow every time you managed to overcome obstacles and solve problems? Aren't difficulties and overcoming them, them exciting? Yes, they are. Weren't your biggest losses the seeds for your greatest victories? Remember, it's the biggest storms that make the best sailors, not the calm waters. Similar to the first one, but deserves repeating if you ask me. Okay, next one, number 17. I think whether you are having setbacks or not, the role of a leader is to display a winning attitude. That's Colin Powell. Science has proven that our attitudes are more important for winning than talent, genius or anything else. 
Setbacks are a normal part of life. They will come sooner or later. As the leader of your life, you must maintain a winning attitude, knowing that you will prevail in the end. You have overcome setbacks before and you will do it again. Having a winning attitude means that even in the face of a loss, you are convinced that you will win in the end. Sometimes learning from a short-term loss can set you up for an even bigger long-term victory. And these are all along the same along the same uh, theme, obviously. But that point needs and deserves to be repeated over and over and over again. It is your attitude that will determine whether or not you succeed. It is your belief that will determine whether or not you succeed. And it is your ability to take things that go wrong, to take failings and learn from them and even, and I can see that the next one's coming up, are going back to my old favourite, gratitude, even be grateful for them. Because had they not happened, had this mishap not happened, this failing not happened, you wouldn't have learned the lesson you needed to learn. So even be grateful for your mistakes and your failings. I've started to read this week. Now, I'm going to go, I'm going to go through this in one of these videos as well. I started to read this week the old, an old classic, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's quite a short book, but it's absolutely fascinating and I'm learning a lot from it. It is... Uh, yeah, it is six parts to it. And how, it, it's essentially how to treat people. It's a guide, how to treat people, how to treat people properly. How to be an upstanding, decent human being and treat those around you with respect and dignity. And that is essentially what this book is about. And it's excellent. And I'm going to, when I'm finished here, I'm going to go and read uh, another chapter of it uh, before I make dinner. Okay, and um, that's it from me for this week. Thank you, everyone, for joining. This has to go up onto the For Britain account because my own account once again for criticizing the police for not doing anything but grooming gangs i've had my youtube account suspended until april which is a real pain there was something else i wanted to mention to you before i go oh yes thanks uh, to martin who who sends me uh, all these wonderful videos and one of them that i've seen is a guy in america i'll post it on twitter now as soon as i'm done here a guy in America who is giving a talk at a conference about lockdowns and masks. And I'll not say too much uh, in order so that I don't run the risk of uh, getting into trouble with YouTube. But do have a look at it. He shows data proving that after the introduction of masks into countries where they were introduced, the curve of coronavirus cases goes up and up and up countries that didn't mask countries that didn't lock down like sweden sweden is a great example it's always the word he even said himself <laughs> one word everyone all the the um the pro lockdown and the pro mask people there's one word they hate hearing and that word is sweden and uh, sweden's you can see its graph is pretty much stable going across 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 no lockdown no masks and compared to countries with lockdown and masks, which are going up and up and up and up and up. It's, again, I watch a lot of this stuff. I go through, I wade through, and I'll tell you about the best of them. Lastly, Rumble. I put up a video on Rumble last week, The Cult of COVID. Have a look at it. I review a book called The Cult of COVID, which, again, of all the books I've read on this, that's probably the best one. This video, which I'll share on Twitter now, is probably the best talk I've seen given on the lockdowns and masks. Again, I'm not going to say too much here because I don't want to get into trouble with YouTube. Right, that's it. Uh, I'll be back. Um, I'm on with David Vance live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. There'll be a video from me about the latest legislation aimed at keeping us from online harms. In other words, censoring people. Friday, I'll be back with a book review of The Case Against Socialism. Um... And over the weekend, I want to have a little chat with members. Um, and so I, we've got a, a for, for members watching this, we've got a committee meeting this week. I will be contacting you all 
about what is what we are going to decide to do as a party about what is going on in terms of elections and what have you. Um, so thanks to everyone for sending in ideas on what we on what we ought to be doing. This will all be all be discussed on Friday, and I'm going to spend a good chunk of the weekend communicating with members about where we are, what we're doing, and how we need to get out of it. We will fight for our democracy by using our democracy. Okay, that's it, everyone. Thanks very much for joining me. I shall see you um, tomorrow night live with David Rance at 8 o'clock. Take care. See you soon.